No Disability founder Dean Braganier and his family call Martha's Vineyard home. It's where he and his wife, Sally Taylor, met. Sally's a Vineyard native, and she is the daughter of the island's first lady of song. We can never know about the days to come. Her songs have touched millions. Carly Simon, the legendary singer-songwriter, is known for her seductive voice and passionate lyrics. What's less known about her is how her journey began. I would say that my family has been given the gift of music and that we all take to music because music is something that we can do so much more easily than we can, you know, in the reading department. Reading was a challenge for Carly. I'm glad you brought these out. I haven't seen these books in a long time. And for the two children she had with James Taylor, Sally and Ben. They are all dyslexic. Carly says her dyslexia was complicated because she also stammered as a child. It wasn't until my mother taught me how to, how to give words rhythm that I began to be able to speak more fluently. So there was one time at the, at the table where I was, I was saying, pass the butter, and I couldn't get the pee out. And my mother said, try to sing it, or try to stamp your hand on your knee with the rhythm of the word. Will you please pass the butter? And once I thought of it like a song, it could be any kind of song at all. Please pass the butter. <laughs> song became her lifeline that she ultimately passed on to her children. Split decisions and wasted time and emptiness. If we split up, is that bad? Daughter Sally Taylor's now a grown woman and talented musician in her own right. When I got diagnosed with dyslexia and I came home and my mom greeted me at the door and I had this diagnosis in my hand and I handed it to her thinking, okay, this is sort of the end of my belonging, my, the end of my fitting in. And my mom's like, oh, thank God. You know, congratulations. Now, you know, it's clear that you're part of the family. The diagnosis always seems to me that, that it's along with some bad news. It doesn't seem as, it's not a diagnosis as much as, much, much as it is putting the label on something that wasn't so clear before. What's clear today is love, support, and music was medicinal in their home. They had a soundtrack for every bedtime story. Oh, look, it's me, I'm Betty the Bunny. Oh, look, oh, look, it's me, I'm Betty the Bunny. And I am a rabbit, and I'm in the habit of eating carrots when I'm hungry. Oh, look, oh, look, it's me, I'm Betty the Bunny. Really, it was like a magical playground for the mind. You know, everything was a metaphor. And that's really the only way I can decode the world around me. And are you still making them up as you go along? Yes. Or are you... In Carly's Martha's Vineyard kitchen, songs about the simple things are regular with these two. I want some coffee, it's so good. Get it so good, I like now. We sing, you know, it's very much like my house was with my sisters and my mother. We just went around singing. Whether it was for my sake, because it was so much easier to sing than it was to talk, or whether it was just fun for everybody to turn our lives into a musical comedy <laughs> starring the Simons. <laughs> what Sally and her brother learned from their mom was that while school was incredibly difficult, they could amplify what they did well, things she's now teaching her own child, Bodhi, who, you guessed it, is dyslexic. You feel like you've got a lot of support? <laughs> a lot. A lot coming from my mom. What do you want for your son, Bodhi? I want him to say, you know, this life is a complete mystery and completely strange, and I'm so into exploring it. 
And that's what Carly hopes others take away from sharing her dyslexic journey. What is so wonderful is to be able to see the glass may be half empty in one area, but it's half full in another. It's not a terrible place to go at all, and it's a happy place to be. Just an amazing story of how they handled this, yeah. but in addition to singing, they had this game they played. They had this game, and it's called Essences, and it makes you think in terms of metaphors. Mm -hmm. So if I tell you I'm thinking of a person, mm -hmm. um, and you try to guess who that person is by asking me, if that person was a plant, what would they be? If that person was a fruit, what would they be? You're always thinking in metaphors. So you have a yes. person in mind. Right? I have a person in mind for you. And I would say, okay, so if this person were a car, what kind of car would this person be? 1969 Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> I get how this game works. I'm going to say Peter Mahigan. You guessed it. That's but right. You're always thinking in those metaphors. Yeah, and as we and heard from I Sally, mean, that helped her so much. It helps them so much. Mm -hmm. And that was the way she decoded the world. So wow. it was a big part of their lives. Well, Sally Taylor inspires variations on the theme of dyslexia. How could you do better than to spread something that's that's wonderful art, which is art.